<sighs> okay, what we're going to do is just <coughs> go through the uh, course outline uh, quickly because this is now for the benefit of the family law students. Uh, Rishen, would you just introduce yourself and so forth? My name is Rishen Singh. I'm an attorney at the UKZN Law Clinic and I have about 15 years legal experience. And your specialization was family law? Was family law, RAF claims, criminal law. Okay, got it. My name is Karen Peter and I'm a candidate attorney at the UKZN Law Clinic. I'm doing two years of articles and I've almost completed my first year. And you, uh, how many divorce matters or family related matters? About 10 family law matters. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Nopuna Mutenezi. I'm also a candidate attorney doing two years at the UKZN Law Clinic. And this is my first year with Karen. Um, I have roughly about six family law matters uh, that I'm currently handling. And okay. Hi everyone, my name is Kunzelen Kizen. I'm also a candidate attorney at the UK Zilin Law Clinic. I'm doing one year of articles, so I'm almost done. Yeah, and um, I currently have um, nine family law matters. Okay. All right, so uh, just for the uh, benefit of, of for you and also the students, the purpose of the module introduce students to the fundamental principles, rules, and values underlying the South African uh, family law system, uh, and provide students with necessary skills to use and apply the Bill of Rights. Now, uh, family law is something that everybody can relate to. Okay? But however, um, what seems to be, if you sit in a classroom and you get lectured to on it, then it sounds uh, easy. Mm. When you have to be confronted with the realities um, and have to apply the theory, it's not that, it's not that simple. All right? So, very briefly, students will be able to de define, explain, apply, and evaluate the legal concepts. Okay? So, that's, this is something that uh, every student must go through because this is what you're going to be be uh, uh, required to do, <clears throat> right? Define, explain, apply, evaluate the constitutional provisions, objectives, and values. Discuss, demonstrate, and evaluate the extent to which the judicial family law system has been developed and transformed. For example, the, the issue of, of adultery um, that now is not actually no, no longer part of our law to sue a third party uh, for alienation of affection. Just the way that the law has looked at, at uh, uh, the marital relationship. Then identify, describe, demonstrate, and evaluate the links between the family law system and other other legal uh, 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 other aspects of legal study. Because what I found, I've been teaching now for thirty years, is that <coughs> um, students don't, particularly law students, if they walk into the contact class, they think contract. If they walk into a criminal procedure class, they think criminal procedure. Mm -hmm. But family law has got uh, uh, connections with contract and the actual contacts. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, criminal, uh, criminal law, because Domestic Violence Act. Mm -hmm. Maintenance, um, also contractual. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? What other are are areas of law does family law draw on? Um, well, evidence. Evidence. evidence, because you are going to be presenting evidence say, in a maintenance court, so you've got to know the, the, the principles. Mm -hmm. And I've also focused um, on what I think I've uh, um, found most in practice. So, uh, for example, have you ever dealt with a, a, a divorce where there's the, the, one of the parties that is continuously unconscious? No. Um, mentally ill? No. So now that I, and I practice family law for now since, since 1996. Um, so those issues, yes, you obviously got to be aware of them. However, I focus on what you're actually going to, to encounter uh, in practice. Okay, then um, <clears throat> uh, analyze factual scenarios. So to identify the nature of the problem, set out the appropriate legal concepts, principles, and rules. Now, they have... Uh, written a test on, um, and the test was my section was spousal maintenance and also um, grounds for divorce. So we'll 
go over that very quickly, but just to, uh, just to put it uh, in context. Okay, so what shall we start off with? As far as my section is concerned, they started off with dissolution, uh, dissolution of marriage. Uh, so, they, just to go over the materials, the students all got PowerPoints um, like this, which I turned into a PDF. <coughs> Then they have got the prescribed book, um, and uh, and uh, there's obviously the family law service, etc., etc., etc. So the materials I'm quite happy with that the, the materials provided for the students is, is adequate. Okay, so disillusion of of of, um, of marriage. Just let's run over over it quickly. Uh, obviously, divorce order. Um, the, the uh, 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 court sets aside avoidable marriage. Have you ever dealt with avoidable marriage? No. No, neither have no. I. And by obviously uh, death of the spouses. So, uh, how the, the uh, parties are married, obviously that's, that is uh, just something that you have to, to know. Now, the uh, calculation of the accrual, I didn't do with the students. So, but they, the calculation of accrual is obviously a, an integral part. Mm -hmm. So your, your marriage in community or property, uh, um, marriage um, out of community property with accrual or without accrual. Now, in terms of an anti-nuptial contract, if there's no mention of uh, the accrual system, uh, does it apply to that marriage? Okay. Does, it doesn't apply yeah. because it says unless expressly excluded in the anti-nuptial contract, then it applies. Okay, so that's a fundamental. I've seen attorneys making that mistake. <laughs> so um, yeah, attorneys that dabbles uh, in family law, um, but they're actually commercial lawyers. But those are the kind of mistakes that they make. Okay, so uh, obviously on death, uh, personal consequences. Uh, 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 end automatically, then surely if you married a community of property, uh, the estate, you have one undivided estate, the one of the parties who dies in terms of their will can obviously uh, leave their part of the estate uh, to someone else. Okay, So uh, in, in the event that say one party dies, then the maintenance, uh, uh, the act applies, maintenance, uh, for surviving spouses act, eh? mm -hmm. right? So, uh, in terms of that act, that obviously makes them provision for the spouse to claim maintenance from the mm -hmm. estate. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, <clears throat> I'm not going to go into then accrual. Uh, so, the grounds for the marriage marriage is irretrievably broken down. If you might be a vermin in your summonses, what, what's the usual vermins that one you... One year separation. Okay, one year separation. Um, not living together as? Husband, 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 wife. husband and wife. Okay. So what other grounds have you uh, encountered in your, uh, uh, in your divorce summonses and so forth? Um, they no longer communicate. Communicate. Mm -hmm. They've lost love and affection. Love and affection. Okay, abuse. Yeah, okay. Physical, emotional yeah. abuse. What do you think? Uh, if a, uh, a wife or a husband uh, makes an averment, say the wife makes an averment that the husband uh, uh, watch too much television or too much sport, <laughs> yeah. do you think that's a ground for divorce? No. <laughs> no. So, <clears throat> in essence, the, uh, the, uh, uh, obviously the, the, um, the law makes provision for the, the court to have some form of discretion mm -hmm. to postpone. Yes. However, say for, to go for marriage counselling or whatever, yes, yeah. and if one party doesn't want to have marriage counselling, the court is going to uh, grant a divorce. Correct. Yes. The underlying principle is simply, you don't want... Uh, the, the law to force parties to be in a marriage they don't no longer be, be in. Yes. Okay. 
So that's just from, from the, the perspective of uh, grounds for the horse. Um, we have covered the irretrievable breakdown, and Schwarzer's case that says there's a subjective inquiry, obviously, in the mind, and also that you, um, oops, what's happening here? That you have an objective inquiry whether the marriage is in fact bro broken down. Mm -hmm. Look separately. Mm -hmm. How many times do we uh, get also in the clinic where uh, there was a marriage and the husband or wife disappears? Usually the husband. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How many uh, how many cases do we do you have? Uh, one. Yeah, also had one. Yeah. How long have the parties been separate? A couple of years. First we started as a substitute service, but then the guy came back and then we did the divorce the normal way. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what is substitute service more or less? Um, he had been missing for about four or five years. Okay. Yeah. And how did, you, how did you actually go about doing the substitute service? Firstly, we had to do the application to courts. It's an application, so you'd have to have your family affidavits, your notice of motion. We had to do um, um, chasing agents reports. We had to do an advert in a newspaper. So yeah. Oh. And and in the in the um, paper, you obviously put the the in essence the particulars of claim. Yeah. And then if the court is satisfied, uh, then they will. Uh, proceed yeah. with the matter yeah. that he has reasonable notice thereof. Mm. Mm. Why is it important that so important that, say, for example, a summons must be served upon the other a person by the sheriff personally? Consequences of divorce, mm. change in status. Yeah. Okay, so a court wants to 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 know that the other party has. Uh... Okay. Uh, there's obviously your three guidelines in terms of the act. Uh, not live together to, uh, uh, as husband and wife, adultery, and habitual criminal, and uh, uh, yeah, declared uh, habitual uh, criminal. So then I'm not even going to deal with uh, un uh, unconscious person and a person in, in, uh, mentally ill. Okay, we've dealt with the fact that the court uh, can refuse to, to, to grant a divorce, it has the power to postpone, but uh, it will not force the parties to live together. I think that more or less um, covers the, the initial area in the dissolution of marriage and how it gets divorced and the grounds for divorce and, and so forth. Okay, so. You've also prepared some questions uh, in respect of past papers uh, and so forth. So I just want to give the students some form of idea of a, a more longer question and what is sort of required. So would you start with one of your longer questions? Sort of the essay type questions. So maybe, maybe something on uh, personal consequences of the divorce or domestic violence, um, children, family advocate. Tell us about a bit about fa family advocate. How does it fit in with with uh, family law and divorce and children and so forth? So. Okay, so when there's a divorce and there's a minor child involved, we when we set out what will happen to the child, like who the child will live with, and so who, the, who will have primary residence of the child, and then which parent has contact with the child, we have to um, send all those, um, like our plan for the child, to the family advocate, and then the family advocate checks that um, everything's okay and that it's in the best interest of the child, that they have like a certain amount of contact with each parent 
mm -hmm. that's shared equally, and only once um, the family advocate approves that, mm -hmm. then only can. Okay, so you mentioned a couple of things. What is their role? Okay. Um, what, <coughs> if I if I can ask you, what are the powers of a family advocate? Can they, a family advocate, the office of the family advocate, grant a divorce? No. What What is their role? To look after the interests of the child. Okay. Now you mentioned the term best interests of the child. Okay. So that's a pivotal area that one has to know. Uh, the term care, what does care mean and how is it defined in the act? What does contact mean and how is contact defined? <clears throat> also, that the, the law moved away from the whole idea that one party has the children primarily with, with, her, uh, with him or her and that only the other has contact. But the, the emphasis now is parental responsibilities and rights. Mm -hmm. okay, so the focus has shifted away mm -hmm. from who is sort of in a power relationship here. Mm -hmm. So guardianship, for example. What's, uh, what does the term guardianship entail? And in particular, when must uh, both guardians give consent? In respect of a uh, of a child, such as what they must. There's five grounds. Mm -hmm. Overseas. Overseas. So both parents, okay. both guardians, must yes. give the consent. What else? If the child wants to get married. Married. If you're applying for a passport. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to alienate or um, encumber immovable property. Okay. Okay. What else? Is that covered? Okay, so obviously guardianship, you, you've yeah. got to know what the powers uh, mm -hmm. of, the, of the guardian is, okay? Uh, interestingly enough, <coughs> also it's only the children's court, uh, only the high court, mm -hmm. that can hear guardian application, guardianship applications. Mm -hmm. I don't know what your opinion is, we should... Uh, the high court, um, the, the, the children's court can hear adoptions, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Where, what is the effect of adoption? Biological parents will no longer have um, responsibilities and rights in respect of that child. Okay, so it's mostly because they cut all ties. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's an, ado an adoption. Mm -hmm. Why should guardianship applications only be heard in the High Court? I think it might, in all probability is that the whole principle of the High Court being the upper guardian of, of children. Mm -hmm. Personally, I, don't, I, I cannot see why a children's court can't uh, uh, grant a, uh, a guardianship order. Um, so in any event, okay. Um, tell us about, let's see, the parent-child relationship and how can a court interfere with that uh, parental responsibilities and rights? What's the criteria that, that the courts use? In order to say very a uh, best interest of the child. Okay, so try and in, 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 uh, in fairly simple terms, what is what's the term best interest of the child be? What kind of factors does the court take into account? That's McCall's case, and of course, which section? Section seven, isn't it? Okay, so section seven is pivotal to. Um, To, to know in respect of what the best interests are. Because here they, they talk about <coughs> um, the nature of the personal relationship uh, uh, between the child and the parents, or any specific parent, the child and caregiver, the attitude of the, uh, the parent, the exercise of parental responsibilities and rights, capacity of the uh, parent or specific parent to provide for the needs of a child, emotional, intellectual needs, you can go through section seven. Uh, this is a long list. Mm -hmm. And then of course, also how the term care uh, is defined in the act. And there's a number of, uh, of uh, um, definitions in the, in the, in the uh, term care in relation to a child within reasonable means, providing for the child a suitable place to live. 
living conditions conducive, necessary financial support. Now, what happens if that parent doesn't have the financial support? What can happen? Surely a child, child can be found in need of care. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, also uh, safeguarding, promoting the well-being of the child, protecting the child from maltreatment, abuse, neglect, degrading, discrimination, exploitation, respecting, protecting, and securing the fulfillment of and guarding against any infringement in terms of the child's uh, rights, set up in the Bill of Rights. Guiding, directing, secure, securing the child's education, etc., etc., etc. All right. So, surely those uh, areas form part and parcel of what the role of the family advocate is. So we go, the family advocate. I got someone to do a um, a guest lecture, a family uh, advocate guest lecture. So, assist in divorce proceedings, mm -hmm. amended in disputed issues, care, contact, guardianship, pivotal uh, concepts you need to know. Unable to reach an agreement, can evaluate the circumstances and then make a recommendation. Is a, a recommendation binding on the court? No. 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 Why not? Because the court has the discretion. 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 Otherwise, the family advocate will have a judicial function. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so it is only a recommendation. Mm -hmm. However, the court can direct the family advocate mm -hmm. to hold an inquiry. Mm -hmm. Okay, or the family advocate can decide that an inquiry is necessary. Mm -hmm. Right now, what would you say? There is the principle that uh, a child can express their views, what would you say, uh, what weight will a court uh, attach to the voice or the, the uh, reasons of a seven-year-old? Seven-year-old? I mean, <coughs> that would depend if they sort of understand what's going on. I mean, a seven-year-old is young, but I think it would be taken into consideration. It wouldn't be disregarded completely. Yeah, yeah. But I think it, it, it simply depends on the age, the maturity, um, and etc., etc., etc. Can a child, whilst we're in the topic, can a child, um, if he's unhappy to uh, live with either mum or dad, bring an application to court um, for the variation um, of, say, an existing court order? Theoretically speaking, can a child do that? A child can can do that. Yeah. However, it, in all probability, a curator at Leetum will be appointed for the child. Okay. Now, there's a difference between also what the family advocate's role is in court proceedings. Mm -hmm. A curator at Leetum will be, be acting for the child. In other words, the voice of the child. Okay, obviously depending on, on now the, the age maturity of the child. But the Office of the Family Advocate is an independent body. Mm -hmm. It's not getting paid by any party. Mm -hmm. the, the service is for free. Mm -hmm. okay? So that's why the court do attach a lot of weight to the recommendation. Mm -hmm. um, the Office of the Family Advocate works in two, uh, in two ways. They usually work in teams. One is a legal person, person, a family advocate, admitted advocate, mm -hmm. experience in uh, family law. The other is a family counsellor, usually a social worker, mm -hmm. with experience in, um, in family law matters. Mm -hmm. They will then interview the parties, they might interview the child, um, depending on the age of the child. Okay? And then compile a report with a recommendation that can obviously be uh, challenged by any of the parties. Okay. The uh, family advocate can also, if deemed necessary, apply to the court to become a party to the proceedings. And they can uh, cross-examine cross witnesses, call witnesses, etc., etc., etc. But not acting as in its purest form for the child. Okay. 
right? The curator ad litem, that's more the, the, the role of the child. Okay, so let's, let's uh, just stop this part of the, of the uh, video and then we, then we um, just take two minutes break. Okay.